All right, it's back day. We're almost 10 weeks out. So today's Friday, tomorrow is Saturday, and Saturday marks 10 weeks out. So I know we kind of skipped a week. We've actually been running like a week ahead of schedule, um, but now we're just trying to catch up and get you guys on track with the rest of the prep. So we got some new equipment in here, so I kind of rebuilt my back day just like I did my, my leg day. So I'll kind of take you guys through what I've been doing. I'm pretty excited about everything we've got. Aside from that, I know you guys see me wearing the Train by JP shirt. I know there's been a lot of discussions about new sponsors and you know what supplement company I'm gonna end up with. And um, I'm not saying this is a, a trail of breadcrumbs, but you know, maybe. I don't know, who knows? Who knows where I'm gonna go? But without further ado, let's go train some back. Vulcan strap. So we're gonna start here on the pullover. Honestly, I've started every back workout with a cable pullover. Now, even if I'm not going to do a working set, which we are gonna work up to a working set, I do like to start with a pullover, something that's gonna run the lats through full range of motion, big stretch, big contraction. Anybody that's you know looking for a way to start off a back workout, I really suggest starting off with a pullover. this I am just kind of using it as a warm-up but we're gonna work up to one working set so I am pyramiding up doing sets of 10 do about four sets total get good and warmed up and then we'll uh, nail a hard working set and then move on to the uh, meat and potatoes of the workout this <laughs> Okay, one and done. Okay, so this next movement, just gonna be a close grip pull down. Got like this neutral handle here. I'm a big proponent of unilateral lat work. And I have two back days. I have a back and hamstring day that right now I'm doing a single arm pull down and I have a single arm row in there as well. But today I'm doing a handful of bilateral movements. So you'll see I'll do like a bilateral row with both arms, a pull down with both arms. I wanna get more work done in a session. Now I have, I think eight movements total in this workout. And if I were to do every single one, single arm, it would take me forever. Sometimes using both arms, just about efficiency and getting in and out. And then also allows you to get a little more work capacity built up within a session. So with this, same rules apply. Big stretch, I like to pause in the stretch for a second. That way I'm initiating each rep with that momentum, pull, fucking squeeze. Stretch, pull, squeeze, repeat. Don't be afraid to spend some time in those end ranges. Fully lengthened, fully shortened.
Okay, so I just did that top set, work up to like a heavy eight, bring in some partials. And then I'm gonna do a back up set now, drop the weight and aim for about 12 plus reps. So top set, back off, and then we'll move on to a rowing movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Next movement is going to be this hammer strength DY row. I know I was just talking to you guys about like, bilateral movements. This is one machine that I can actually use with both arms and it aligns really well. A lot of times I have to sit off to the side, lean over to kind of dig in and really get into the lats. But this one turns out Dorian Yates uh, knows what he's talking about and designed this beautifully. So for anybody that doesn't know, it's a DY row for Dorian Yates. He collaborated with Hammer Strength back in the day and made this beautiful piece. So we're gonna take this for a run and uh, yep, get a big back. So I tend to get questions about my wrist straps a lot. People ask me what wrist straps I'm using. These are the Versa Grip Pros. Tough to beat, I really like the Versa Grips. So anybody that's gonna comment down in the comment section, hopefully I save you the time, but anybody is curious, first of grips. Yeah, and Comfort Color 1717. Yeah, Comfort, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, the shirt I'm wearing is a Comfort Color 1717. Not this one, but that's what, man, I think that's my most asked question, holy shit. And I feel bad, I'm sorry everybody that I've ignored, but I get asked that question. I need to start screenshotting it. I should screenshot it, because it probably comes into my DMs 12 to 15 times a day. Every time I make a post in that plain shirt, there's 10, 15 comments at least, and most of those guys are gonna DM me. And then you go to my YouTube and everyone's commenting on my YouTube. Then you go to my TikTok and everyone's asking on my TikTok. And then I'm just getting random text messages from phone numbers I don't even know. They're like, get, tell me the fucking shirt. What fucking shirt is it? God, dude, it's crazy. It's just a blank T-shirt. But yeah, Comfort Colors, 17, 17. It's a great blank shirt. I get it on Amazon. All right, so I'm just warming up on this, but I wanna to talk to you guys about something. What I see a lot of people doing is pulling off the pad and arching when they're trying to train their lats. Now, I really want to think about keeping my chest married to this pad, neutral spine, and just rowing and digging the elbows into the lats. So no arching and pulling off the pad, neutral spine, almost flex your abs, brace into the pad, bam and dig the elbows into the lats. Now, full stretch. Again, sit in that stretch for a second. Really load the muscle when it's lengthened. Row and dig, bam. And then repeat until you can't do anymore. That's how you grow.
Whoops, I dropped my mic. Beautiful, mic check, mic check. All right, pulling the weight back here for a back off set. Top set back off. Now I'm gonna do a rest pause on this one. So, you guys know what a fucking rest pause is. I've explained it so many times. But I'll do it one more time, check this out. Rest pause, I'm gonna do a failure set, 15 deep breaths, failure set, 15 deep breaths, failure set. Probably aiming for something like a 12, five, three, 12, five, five, something like that. It's the last time I'm telling you guys how to do it. No, I'll tell you guys next workout. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this row. Two sets, top set, back off for the rest pause. Moving on. Okay, so next movement is gonna be a dumbbell row. I'm gonna do a bent over, like bilateral, uh, double. Oof. Oh man, cut. All right, so the next movement is gonna be a bent over, uh, double dumbbell row, so like a bilateral dumbbell row. Now this will be my only spinal loading movement in the workout. I do have another back day that I do a hip hinge, a uh, stiff leg deadlift or an RDL. But today is the back day that's right after my leg day. Now I just find any more than one spinal loading movement after my leg day can just be problematic. So this will be the only spinal loading movement. The rest of it's just gonna be like machines and cable stuff that you guys have already seen. Boy, I feel like I struggled to get my foot positioning on that. I was like shuffling.
Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Two sets there. Top set back off. Moving on. Let's go. Next movement is going to be this leverage row. Now this is just like the old flex leverage, but it's actually Mega Mass out of Houston. So this gentleman right here completely mimicked the flex leverage rows here. And these things feel incredible. I'm so happy with this machine. I'm gonna have the seat lowered and we'll be rowing into the upper back. Now this is a phenomenal lat row, it really is. Seat high, hands in tight, driving to the elbows. But as you guys seen, everything has been lat biased up until this point. So now I'm gonna drop the seat. I'm gonna hold a little bit wider on the handles and I'm going to drive the elbows up and behind me into the upper back. Now, for those of you that don't really understand how these things work, the elbow path is going to dictate the bias of these rows, right? So if I'm tucked in, shoulder depressed, elbow in tight, I'm gonna be digging into my lats. Now, if I'm rowing up and driving the elbow behind me into my rhomboids, we're gonna be rowing into the upper back. Drive the elbows behind us, thoracic extension, really nail the rhomboids and upper back. You hear that? It's ricer season out there. The sun comes out and so, so do the Hondas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, VTEC baby. Okay, let's work. Good shit. Okay, so I'm gonna come into this back offset here. As you guys notice, everything was lat biased. The pull over, the pull down, the DY row, three lat movements. Then coming into that bent over dumbbell row, my intentions are to drive into the lats. But anytime you're bending over and rowing like that, whether it's a dumbbell row, Smith machine row, barbell row, you're gonna be using the whole back. The erectors are loaded. You're gonna row into the upper back, it's inevitable. So I really like to use that as an opportunity to transfer from lat movements into an upper back. So as you guys see, lat, 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 the row, now I'm doing an upper back row. I'm gonna go from this upper back row into another upper back movement, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of my thought process as to why I structure things the way I do. All right, just a second and I'll jump in. I tired myself out with all that talking and explaining. It really takes it out of me. Oh yeah. Uh, am I? No, I don't know. Slow? Am I taking too long? I probably am. I always take too long. It's kind of my thing. I'm Except for, you know, in the bedroom. Bye. Right. Bye, right, sweetie. Right, so next movement is going to be this leverage pull down. Again, this is from Mega Mass. It's like a, a mock flex piece. Going to come to this pull down. I'm just going to do one set here. And if anybody watched like the last leg day, I did a stretch pause on the line hamstring curl. And again, I stole that from my buddy, Brett Wilkin. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, I really find that I get an awesome stretch on this movement. I really like to spend some time in that stretch. Do eight reps, 10 second hold in the stretch, eight reps again, 10 second hold in the stretch, and then try to do eight reps for a third time. We'll see how it goes.
And the focus here is to get an upper back pull down. So as you guys see, this stretch right here, that's a big stretch on my terries. And then when I'm doing the pull down, I'm driving my elbows behind me and into my upper back. I'm not trying to hit my lats here at all. I am trying to specifically and intentionally hit my terries, my upper back, rhomboids. Now there is probably some, well, there is some secondary lat involvement, of course, but that's not my intention here. My intention is to bias the upper back. Okay. Okay. nine happy with that jeez this is a new piece of equipment i think it's only my second or third time using it so i'm still kind of figuring out the weights for these specific rep ranges so when i actually nail it it's a good feeling oh jeez, that felt great okay last movement we're gonna come to this rogers three-way row So you guys seen, so went from upper back, upper back. Now I'm gonna finish with this lat row. I'm gonna do this unilaterally, single arm, really dig into the lats and finish things off for the evening. So let's get to work, everybody. You guys can see this is like a picture perfect lat row the way this arcs and drops that elbow into the hip is just perfect you really couldn't design a piece better for a lat bias row this thing is absolutely phenomenal so you guys see i'm kind of kicked off to the side slightly slight lateral uh, bend in the spine and really just keeping that elbow tucked in and driving right into the hip as close to the body as possible rowing right to the midline of the body, not behind me, and just really nailing the lat. I love this piece, very happy with it. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I love it. Oh, did you watch my last leg day video, or my last video before that? I watched it, I didn't watch it. Did you? Leg. You did? Okay. <laughs> So you shared the leg day video. Well, the reason I ask is, is you're in it. 
Oh shoot. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna watch that. Tonight. Yeah, there you go. That's that's how I have to get him to watch my content. <laughs> no. I have to tell him he's in it. He's not actually in it, but he thinks he's yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Okay, well, that's gonna be it for my back day. Just one all out set to failure here. As you guys see, nice blend of lat bias stuff, upper back. When you guys are building your back days, I get a lot of questions about this stuff. How do you construct a back day? What movements should I be doing? Just make sure you're prioritizing the, all the elements of your back. Make sure you have a hip hinge so you can be loading your erectors. Make sure you have a lat bias row so you can be nailing your lats. Make sure you have an upper back row, an upper back pull down, and then just find combinations that you enjoy. Stick with them for a period of time. Get stronger, progress. When things stall, rotate them out. It's good to have different you know, weapons in your arsenal, things that you can move around. But ultimately, find movements and get very good at them and get very strong at them and build a lot of muscle. All right, guys, I'm out of here, 10 weeks out. I'm hungry, it's time to eat. We'll catch you on the next one.